Next, we're going to switch to Abijit. Thanks to our last speaker, and I'm just checking to see if we have Abijit joining us as well from Verizon. Okay. Hi, uh, yeah. Okay, great. <laughs> So one of the most exciting things we had in the last few months was getting to do a grand opening for the Verizon 5G Innovation Hub right here at the Research Park at Enterprise Works Incubator, serving the whole Research Park and being able to provide a location where technologists can test out the use of ultra-wide 5G. Abija is joining us from San Diego and will be hopefully coming back and forth to the extent it'll be allowable to facilitate this lab. And he's going to tell you more about the capabilities. Now, he is a distinguished architect within Verizon and has a long career in the tech field. So I think he'll be a real asset to those that need to understand the technology details of enabling the use of 5G. Thanks for joining us, Abhijit. Thank you, Laura. So um, I guess I, I'll start by sharing my screen and the presentation that I have. Great. So thank you, everybody, for uh, uh, joining me and giving me this opportunity to present here. So I'm gonna talk about, you know, some of the Verizon 5G innovation related activities uh, at the University of Illinois Urbana-Champaign and sort of provide a broad overview of uh, where, you know, Verizon uh, is headed uh, in this area of uh, big data, AI, ML, um, 5G technology, computing at the edge and so on. So. Okay, so uh, those are the four areas. I already talked about them, and then I'll talk a little bit about um, the University of Illinois 5G Innovation Hub that we've just inaugurated in the month of October. So if you see um, where, uh, sorry. It's okay. Yeah, if you see where uh, technology is going and trending, sorry, my mouse is, creating some problems here. Uh, uh, what's going on right now is there is a, a compression in the timeline of uh, like industrial revolutions. You know, each of the past three industrial revolutions that we've had took about 80 to 100 years, you know, starting from that steam engine, uh, going to electricity and then going to electronics and circuits. And now we're uh, going through a fourth industrial revolution where you know, there's a combination or uh, connectivity and computation and artificial intelligence are basically blending um, to create a flywheel effect. And you can see here, we've got AI, big data, and there's the internet of things technology, which is all about scaling to millions of devices uh, in the future. There is uh, AR, VR, okay, which is a lot of, uh, uh, you know, things related to video processing, creating alternative, uh, alternate universes. And there's the cloud computation uh, uh, technologies and platforms that are now becoming all available. And all these are growing together, um, this is 2020. Um, combine that with 5G technology, that's what's causing that flywheel effect and the hockey stick curve. And so we're going to see a much more rapid sort of, uh, timeline to uh, a maturity of the fourth industrial revolution, which has all these ingredients. Uh, Verizon, uh, you know, is, is primarily has been a uh, wireless technology company and a wireless service provider. Uh, and uh, it, one of the things that we have always pushed for is higher bandwidths, higher speeds, um, reduce latencies, and this is what 5G technology offers. So we were among the first to launch 5G fixed wireless access at home in 2018. Um, and then we uh, first launched our 5G network with uh, a commercially available 5G smartphone in, in 2019, in the beginning of 2019. And today we are at 55 cities with the so-called Verizon 5G mobile ultra wideband service, which affords the very, very high speed, high bandwidth signal um, that becomes available um, to, to these locations. Now, at the same time, we also have nationwide 5G on our existing spectrum, which is not that ultra wideband spectrum. It's in, a, it's, in a, it's in the more traditional spectral area, okay, where, um, where we have nationwide coverage. 
but even then, uh, even with, with the traditional spectrum, we get uh, you know double to peak speeds uh, in the mobile ultra wideband uh, areas where we have these 55 cities, you're going to get 10x speeds, okay? Uh, compared to what you get with LTE today. We have 25 mobile devices launched and uh, more importantly, for, for the purpose of this discussion, we have uh, five MEC locations deployed. So I'm going to talk a little bit more about uh, what MEC is. MEC is mobile uh, multi-access edge computing. Um, and what that means is, uh, what those five locations means is we've partnered with uh, a key partner, um, Amazon, to uh, provide uh, edge availability zones for computation uh, where, where you can host AI, ML, machine learning, and big data type uh, you know, applications. Okay. So this is an overview of edge computing that compares uh, the tr traditional uh, cloud computing model versus what is proposed. Okay. So in the traditional model, uh, what we have is, especially when you look at IoT. Okay. You have all these remote devices that are generating tons of information, tons of data. This is all sensor information. This is, uh, you know, could be information at the radio technology layer um, in, in addition to uh, other metadata, right? Um, so this information is being collected and transferred all the way to some sort of a cloud environment through a wide area network, okay, through an access network and a wide area network. Now this latency, the, the, the amount of time it takes is the latency, right? For this data to land in the cloud. Uh, and that latency can range between uh, like 150 to up to 300 milliseconds, depending on how your routes are set up, okay? Now going forward with the distributed cloud computing model uh, combined with 5G access, right? Uh, that's like you get a double whammy, right? You, uh, you have this edge cloud layer called MEC, okay, uh, which is, look at it as an extension, like an outreach area for your cloud compute environment where you have a full cloud stack for your computation available to you. Now these devices are connecting, rather than connecting on 4G, they're gonna connect over 5G, which means they're, the speed at which they can transfer data itself is 10 times more, okay. Uh, now, as soon as they transfer data, they're reaching a computation environment rather than going all the way to the cloud. And so that gives them, uh, uh, gives a much lower latency, uh, as good as five milliseconds for making real-time decisions that are based on uh, uh, AI or ML um, uh, algorithms. So this will change the economics um, of this will change the economics of computation and the costs of delivering solutions um, for both enterprises and to end consumers, right? So three main pillars where we see uh, AI ML being applied, okay, are intelligent video analytics, uh, artificial intelligence and machine learning itself applied to a whole host of uh, different applications like, uh, you know, in manufacturing, I'm gonna get to a slide talk a little more about use cases, but uh, operationals, uh, you know, enhanced operations, supply chain. These are all the areas where we see 5G technology combining with uh, artificial intelligence and machine learning to actually add value and change the economics of, uh, of, of a lot of these, of these uh, businesses. Uh, the third upcoming hot area is the uh, augmented reality, virtual reality area which has some fantastic applications and Verizon itself as a business has some cool uh, uh, projects right now in uh, uh, you know, customizing um, context experiences and uh, you know, uh, working with some of the key movie studios that we have, um, uh, you know, we have some partnerships with them um, to uh, apply these AR VR technologies uh, to, uh, to movie making, to creating gaming experiences. And then also on the, on the uh, enterprise side, we have um, some new things related to AR, VR, um, you know, like interactive ads, um, fraud detection uh, in purchases, as well as digital malls. So instead of real malls, you go out and do shopping, you shop in uh, digital malls. Okay, so we have some active projects in those areas. 
some of these use cases, um, you know, extending beyond what I just talked about, um, is in the areas of uh, transportation that involves like autonomous driving, making intelligent decisions on driver safety, navigation, and so on. Uh, agriculture is a big area uh, for AI ML, uh, for crop yield management, uh, which involves, of course, near real time smart monitoring uh, control, and also in involves long term future intelligent planning. Uh, manufacturing is very real-time driven. Um, we need real-time AI uh, driven decisions to um, reconfigure assembly lines, uh, change schedule, uh, change plans of uh, certain uh, manufacturing robots uh, and so on. Um, industrial is basically, if you look at warehousing, like think Amazon warehouses, where you have moving robots and you have all kinds of sensors collecting all Kind of information about inventory uh, and and providing feedback and uh, again using uh, you know definitely lends to AI ML techniques uh, to provide insights and make decisions uh, that are tied to business uh, health and safety uh, skills and development training that's education right education is also a very important area where we can apply AR VR technologies um, smart building as well as logistics delivery logistics where location data could be key. Uh, for uh, processing through AI ML. So uh, this is a slide that talks about, you know, why do a MEC uh, and 5G go together? Uh, so MEC provides this latency and there's a couple of different types of MEC, uh, private MEC and public MEC. Okay, so the type of use cases differ depending on how much latency you can tolerate, right? So uh, if you want uh, the uh, real time, virtual near real time, on-site uh, type of experience uh, in processing, um, you want to do something called a private MEC, which will be like an edge compute framework, which will sit in your private LAN or a private network. Uh, and it will do all these different things like industrial robotic control, predictive maintenance, um, and uh, uh, and QA automation. Uh, you, go, you can tolerate a little more latency, you can do um, remote patient monitoring, but you're still, you know, in the 20 to 7 millisecond range, you can do cloud gaming and autonomous vehicles, right? Um, in smart communities, in smart cities, um, you can do uh, a little more latency, like around 80 to 20 milliseconds. You can do real-time supply chain, augmented reality in stores, shelf inventory, and volumetric rendering. Um, and then the broader cloud computation model remains the same, you know, the same type of applications, you know, you can do some big data processing. Uh, where you know latency is not a critical factor, but if you have volumes of data coming in, that's where um, you know you still need uh, the cloud edge, uh, you know the, the main cloud, not the edge, uh, where you need a full data storage framework, a data ingest and storage framework. Uh, you need the algorithm uh, hosting, and uh, and also the insight. Uh, and pro providing the business insights type of um, experience through the SAS um, software as a service framework uh, through visualization and UI. Okay. Sorry. Um, so this is a, sort of an overview of what we do. Um, Verizon. So, so far what we've done. So we've got data coming in from on the right hand side, you see devices um, that are collecting uh, or streaming information or batching information over to the MEC platform. And there's a few different ones. Our, our framework is very flexible. You know, we work with um, like uh, Kubernetes is our orchestration layer. I'm going to come to the next slide on that but we work with Amazon's uh, infrastructure or it could be Google Cloud Platform or Microsoft Azure. And we also have our own um, IAS platform as well. Um, and then the models and the, all the training is done. Um, and again, in any private cloud, the model is pushed to the MEC platform. Um, and that's where the model is used to process on the real-time data that's coming in. And the examples are, um, you know, we have projects going on with corning in manufacturing, uh, in real-time uh, automation and manufacturing. 
DLR to digital out of the home media, which is like the advertising uh, and digital signage area. So you can see historical uh, trending data is provided to the cloud at the edge. And that's where, uh, depending on real time conditions, uh, the signage can adapt to whatever uh, you know, they want to advertise at that time or uh, uh, do any sort of other messaging. Same thing with vending um, and retail. Uh, there are AI models that train on what type of users are coming into what shelves and what they might be interested in. Um, and the data is fed to the cloud, uh, then a model is trained and then a uh, the model is pushed over to the Met platform at the edge uh, for, for actual uh, real-time use. So this is uh, an architectural view of uh, our AI platform. And uh, so I talked about the infrastructure as a service, uh, which is a standard infrastructure with Azure, AWS, and running Kubernetes or Docker as the orchestration layer. And then we have uh, the platform as a service layer where we have different um, available uh, AI ML frameworks like TensorFlow, um, that's possible. But then Verizon has their own framework called Leo uh, that is being used for some of these AR, VR projects. And, uh, uh, customized context experiences for, um, for consumers based on some of the media, some of the data that we get from consumers through the Yahoo platform. Verizon, as you know, you owns Yahoo. Um, so uh, we get a ton of data uh, from uh, you know, different Yahoo properties like fi Yahoo Finance, Yahoo Sports, uh, Yahoo Mail um, that we were able to process and uh, provide custom experiences. And uh, so this platform can be used, it exposes APIs that you can, any software as a service uh, can be implemented on top of this in these multiple uh, you know, forward looking areas like uh, I talked about video analytics, smart manufacturing, IOT and so on, okay. So this is what we just launched at uh, the UIUC hub. We have a state of the art high bandwidth 5G signal um, uh, it, it, the last we tested was giving me at least one gigabits per second in throughput. Um, it's only lab coverage. It doesn't cover uh, beyond enterprise works. It'll only give you coverage in that area. Um, there's also a 4G LTE signal, but bottom line, um, any application hosted internally on the UIUC LAN can have access to the signal can, with, a, with a prototype device that can hook up to a 4, 5G modem and uh, any of our enterprise partners at the hub can, um, can test out prototype applications and uh, see how their uh, applications are performing. Okay, we are going to add some private MEC computing resources uh, to, the, to the lab, to the, to the hub, uh, so that if someone, if some enterprise partner wants to host a, uh, let's say a, an AI or ML based uh, application, um, they can use our resources as well instead of using theirs, okay? Because ours will be closer to the edge. So you have less latency. Um, we provide demos of our 5G benefits. Um, you know, we're doing simulated demos right now, but we're going, we're working towards a real demo in the future. Um, we can demo some uh, vertical application use cases uh, in these different areas of AR, VR, manufacturing, IoT, IoT and intelligent video. Um, and we can discuss, you know, one of the purposes of having this lab is so that we understand our partners use cases and we are adapt our offerings, uh, our, our capabilities and our support in the lab so that they are enabled and they succeed. <clears throat> uh, and so if you want to talk to uh, us, uh, you can send me email, um, you know, presentation will be available to you. Uh, you can also do in-person meetings, although that's uh, a bit difficult right now with COVID and my traveling back and forth, but that still can be coordinated. We can work on that. Uh, and then if you want feedback, send feedback to Research Park at Illinois at ADU. Um, thank you very much. That was the end of my presentation. I'll open it up to uh, uh, questions and comments.
Thank you, Abhijit. And as you shared, we are happy from our team to schedule opportunities to see the facility or gain access. And we'll do that in coordination with Abhijit. And he's available to give technical assistance as well, whether that's remote or in person. We're gonna to try to find ways that you can test out the new technology. And I think we have somebody, okay, we've got a question. Will 5G finally bring internet to rural areas? I've been working at, at home without a good connection for seven plus months. Talk to, talk to us about rural outreach and the future for Verizon, Abhijit. So uh, that's a very good question. And it's a, tri it's a tricky question to answer. Um, see, fundamentally, you know, there is always a trade-off when you go to 5G technology, right? It, it, that's a general trade-off of mathematics of wireless communication. So if you go to higher and higher frequencies and bandwidths, your, your signal goes kind of more flaky. It's, it's not as, you know, it does not tolerate, uh, you know, this, uh, obstacles and things like that. Um, and the overall coverage of that signal goes down. Okay, so there is a trade-off there. H having said that, okay, 5G is capable of spreading to rural fairly easily through our fiber optic properties. So yeah, look at it as a deployment of a series of small cells that can be all hooked up with fiber optics, uh, fiber optic networking on the backhaul. So that's one possible deployment, but it's not cheap. It's, it's still expensive, okay? So that's why uh, I would say that it's still a challenge area for us in, in that sense, it's, it's going to come. You know, we already have nationwide 5G coverage. I think that it's not yet fully covering 100% of the population. It's about uh, 300 million or three something million. It's about 200 million pops at the moment, but it will get to the rural areas with the sub, what's called a sub six band of signal, uh, which is pretty much the current frequencies that Verizon operates on. Okay, but some more frequencies in the, in the three and a half, two and a half gigahertz range, okay. So that does give you that extensive coverage. So what I'm saying is, yes, you will get internet access, but you might not get those hyper fast speeds at the ultra wide band free, you know, frequency bands. So those are sort of the premium uh, areas and those are targeted to a wider set of use cases rather than just the home broadband access. So yes, uh, 5G will, will definitely solve, uh, you know, once it gets to true nationwide, you know, and it is nationwide, but it's still, there's gonna be pockets that don't have it. Uh, once it gets there, you will have higher speed coverage than what you have today. So very important as people are working from different environments, they're thinking about this and connectivity and internet access, as well as using your devices has never been more important. Thank you for joining us, Abhijit, and for Verizon's investment in the research park to help bring 5G technology to inventors and entrepreneurs. Please let us know if you're interested in using the lab and the innovation hub here in Champaign. Thanks so much.